In this demonstration, we're now going to go about creating our first app service plan in the Azure portal, and we'll use this to deploy our web apps on top of later on. So let's head over to the Azure portal. Okay, and in the Azure portal, on the top left, simply select Create a Resource, type in App Service Plan, and you'll see it come up. Simply select it once it's there, and that will give you the option to create the App Service Plan. Go ahead and click Create. And now we need to enter our details. So first of all, what's the name of our App Service Plan? I'm going to use SL-App Service Plan as my example. Select our subscription, I'm going to use my pay as you go one, and I'm going to create a new resource group to put all of these objects in. So call this one SL-App Services. Choose your operating system that your web apps that you're going to put on top are going to run on. So if you're doing .NET apps for Windows, you would use Windows. If you're doing some kind of Linux-based uh, apps, you would choose Linux as your operating system. And then select your location. So in my case, I'm going to use Central US and then choose pricing tier. Now this brings us up to a good point. If we go over to our web browser and pull up app service plans on the Microsoft site, and if we scroll down, this is where you need to understand all the differences between the app service plans, and you can see Linux is called out specifically under app service Linux there as well. So if we look at these, we've got free, shared, basic, standard, premium, and isolated, as we mentioned in the tutorial section. So some of the key things we need to remember as we look through these. So first of all, there are limits on the number of apps you can deploy in free and shared. So it's 10 for free, 100 for shared. There are disk space limits as well, so 1 gig for those shared tiers. Then as we get up to basic, it's 10 gig, standard 50 gig, 250 gig in premium, and then 1 terabyte in isolated. And then we also have a max number of instances. So you may get questions on this on the exam. And you can see that under basic, we can go up to 3, standard up to 10, premium jumps us to 20, and then isolated is 100. If we scroll further down, you'll see some other things like deployment slots are only available when you get up to the standard tier and higher. Development tools, everything's pretty much there, but things like cloning apps are reserved for premium and isolated, as well as some of the testing and production options. Those are for standard, premium, isolated, and app service for Linux as well. Most of the diagnostics and monitoring tools are there throughout, just some exceptions for app service Linux. Uh, and then for networking, you'll see there as well. If we want VNet integration, we have to be at standard, premium, or the dedicated isolated tier as well. For programming languages, if we drop down, pretty much good across the board there. You'll see, though, the difference between what you can deploy on top of app service for Linux and the generic Windows app services there as well. So that's important to be aware of. The one extra one you get there is Ruby on Linux, which you can't do on the, the Windows systems. And then as far as scale goes, that's the other important thing. You can see that auto scaling is only supported on standard or higher, as well as traffic manager is only supported on standard premium and isolated as well. So just be aware of this matrix. You know, I think I've covered the major ones you'll get asked on the exam there. The big one that you'll see is probably around scaling and the sizes that you can scale up and down. You know, there's definitely a lot of questions on those. So with that, let's jump back to our portal and go ahead and select a tier. So if we'll scroll down, and you can see there that these represent the price of the underlying infrastructure. So if I go ahead and select a standard, this is a two core, three and a half gig of RAM, you know, I've got that 50 gig of storage, I can scale up to 10 instances there. So you get a good summary there and I get five deployment slots. So if I select that one, hit select, and then go ahead and click create, that will now spin up that app service plan and should take probably you know a minute or two for that to be available. So we'll fast forward while that completes. Okay, and we can see in our notifications that deployment succeeded. So we'll go ahead and select that resource. That should take us directly to our app service plan. Take away these notifications. And we can see an overview there. We can see it's obviously not very much in use right now. The CPU percentage is low, but you've got this kind of good monitoring overview of your app service plan right at the front of the main screen. We can see that it's in central US, its status is ready, and then on the right hand side we don't have any apps uh, deployed you know, live or into any deployment slots at the moment. So with that, that concludes this demonstration, and let's move on to the next module where we'll start looking at deploying web apps themselves.